Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. Meet a young man who is much more than able in many, many ways. Despite being in a wheelchair, Kajon pushed himself to do what he and his family thought impossible. Sports! I never thought he would be able to play any kind of sports. Find out how the love of dance can shape a person's life. Learn how an art gallery that moves people was also moved. See how to make a colorful local sweet treat from scratch. Hear the passion in a young man's rhymes when he uses rap as a means of personal expression. Meet a woman who dedicates her life to the preservation of precious Hawaiian ecosystems. And find out how a high school baseball team uses an ancient Japanese tradition to bond. Stay tuned for these stories and see what the schools featured in this show pick as their favorite regional foods. All on this episode of Hiki No! Can Do! We're here on the campus of Maui High School in central Kaolui, Maui. A local treat here in Kaolui is the Sakaguri Guri. This sweet treat is a mixture of sherbet and ice cream and comes in only two flavors, pineapple and strawberry. When you come, order as many scoops as you want. If that's not enough, take home a quart. But you can't make this on your own because the recipe to make Guri Guri is a family secret. On these hot Kaolui days, getting a cup of Guri Guri really hits the spot. This next story by students from my high school on Maui is about a young man who is more than able. Kajan Dakis is just like any other piano student who struggles with mastering the notes. But coordinating with the keys is not the only worry Kajan has to create that perfect piece. So Kajan was born with spina bifida. It's a birth defect where your backbone did not completely close. So anything below that is affected, in, in, in his case, including his mobility. Kajan has been using his wheelchair for most of his life. This in itself has brought him some challenges, especially during his recent transition from Pukukui Elementary to Mariwaina Intermediate in Kahului, Maui. The biggest difference is that there's, the campus is kind of bigger than my other campus. And we don't stay in one classroom, we sw switch every, every hour for different classes. But when I have to go down to the field because there's like portables, it takes me a long time and sometimes I'm late to class. His teachers are understanding, but there are areas where he feels left out. But when I see like other kids playing football or soccer, sometimes I feel like, oh, I, w I wonder how it feels like to um, play football or soccer. Despite being in a wheelchair, Kajan pushed himself to do what he and his family thought impossible. Sports. I never thought he would be able to play any kind of sports. Through the years, Kajan has been on a roll. He is involved in numerous sports, including tennis, surfing, wheelchair racing, and swimming. I like to do these things because it's fun and it gets me exercise. What I like about swimming is I get to meet new kids and I get to get, get along with them and I get to meet my new, my new coach. I get to uh, go to other places like Oahu. You are amazing. Last year, Kajan brought home a silver and a bronze medal from Do Special Olympics. I got them in Oahu. After keeping himself busy with school and sports, which I got scared because I thought there were sharks. At the end of the day, Kajan will ultimately go back to his first love. My hobbies are playing the ukulele and piano and a little bit of guitar. My favorite is playing the ukulele. I started playing the ukulele four years ago when I was seven. He goes to parties and community events and he plays and sings for the community. 
Ejan is unique because he proves me wrong. He not only lives up to my expectations, but he soars above it. Even with his disability, the support Kajan has from his family, paired up with his cheerful attitude, has enabled him to pursue his numerous involvements, proving that he definitely is able. This is Yasha Anquillo from Maui High School for Hikino. Hikino is on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We are here at Kapa'a Middle School, located on the east side on the island of Kauai. One of our favorite foods in Kapa'a is Pono Market's Chicken Bowl. Pono Market is located in the heart of Kapa'a Town. Founded in 1968, it is a local favorite. On top of a rice base, there are pieces of fried chicken soaked in a flavorful marinade. The people of Kauai love it because they say their chicken is fried to perfection. There is also great proportion between the chicken and the rice. The Pono Market's Chicken Bowl is a comfort food to almost everyone on Kauai. The following story by students from Kapa'a Middle School on Kauai shows us how the love of an art form can shape a person's life. I can say that ballet has been the one theme in my life that has been so utterly consistent. To Miss Jennifer Bell Gray, dance is not just a series of movements put to music. Instead, it has guided and shaped her life, and at one point was a form of healing. When I was 13, my father died in an accident suddenly, and I couldn't really express myself in, um, in talking, so dance was really my outlet for grief. Miss Belle Gray has been expressing herself through dance since the age of three, when she saw Swan Lake and instantly fell in love. Seeing the dancers move to this Tchaikovsky music in this beautiful way made me feel like a bird, made me feel like a swan. Ballet remained a dependable and stable outlet as she and her family left Kauai and moved from one country to the next. We moved to Hong Kong. I lived there for three years. After that, we moved to the northern part of Thailand for one year. And from there, we moved to England. And then at the age of 10 was when I auditioned for the Royal Ballet School. At the Royal Ballet School in London, England, Miss Belgrade danced before thousands of people, even British royalty. But after many long and painful hours in the studio, her sights began to focus on a new goal. There were blisters, many blisters, strained muscles, soreness, aches and pains, feeling mentally fatigued, wondering, can I really do this? Upon graduating from the Royal Ballet School, I came home to Kauai. I had this hope that one day I would have my own company. A conscious decision to leave the stage in pursuit of inspiring young dancers led her to open the Kauai Dance Center, where, for the past 19 years, she has used her personal experiences to relate to her students. I was very shy growing up. I didn't talk much. I really put myself in their shoes to understand what would be the most effective way to reach them and to develop their confidence in themselves. Uh, I would say that I was shy to be performing in front of people. I had never really done that before. She's very interactive. She likes to make sure you know what you're doing before she continues. She will reposition your body so that you feel what it's like to do the move correctly. Miss Belgray loves teaching ballet, lyrical, and hip hop to a new generation of dancers. But it's not just about technique. She hopes dance has a positive impact on their lives as it does on hers. It's been a privilege to teach my students and be involved in my students' lives and watch them grow. You help someone strategize to bring out the best in themselves because the performance, boom, it's over. But the memory of it, that can last your lifetime. This is Shade Thomas from Kapa'a Middle School for Hiki No. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created the story learned from their experience. We're here on the campus of Hawaii Preparatory Academy in Waimea on the island of Hawaii. HPA is in the middle of Paniolo country, which usually means a juicy steak, but there are plenty of other ways to provide farm-to-table items to the students. 
One of these efforts is Mindful Monday, where everyone in the HPA community is invited to share a delicious, diverse, and INA-friendly lunch in the outdoor classroom at the Energy Lab. The only rule is that you have to bring a dish to eat. It has to be meatless and have one locally sourced ingredient. But don't be intimidated. It doesn't have to be vegan, and even some avocados or a bunch of bananas is enough. Mindful Mondays promote health of bodies, connect our community, and help us care for our environment. This next story by students from Hawaii Preparatory Academy is about a historic school building here in Waimea that has found a second life. And we often have people walking in and they'll say, oh, I used to go to school here. And oh, this is where I was sitting, you know. I even had a couple once that came in and said, we met here in the fourth grade and they got married and had children. In the heart of Waimea on Hawaii Island sits the Isaacs Art Center. This school building has a history that goes back to 1915. It is on the register of historic places because those old buildings have not survived. Very, very few have survived. <clears throat> they were called plantation style, where you would use essentially what you had. And then many things were brought in from the mainland. Well, the building was used for approximately 90 years or so as a school, the first elementary school here in Waimea. 1915 is the date of construction. So it served for a very long time. And as you can imagine, a large number of people went to school here. This building was first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So I started in their first grade room, and I went through all of the rooms. <laughs> the building fell into disrepair once new school buildings were built, and after 85 years of service was slated for demolition, until 2003 when Hawaii Preparatory Academy took ownership of the building. The process of moving the building essentially was to cut it into four sections. They stabilize it, remove the roof, so that it could go under the traffic light and then lifted it onto a, a trailer and then each section was moved here. We had prepared the land, this is HPA land, so we had, everything was ready for it. You know, we had trenches, we had platforms, we had everything ready. And then after that, it was a matter of one year of restoration. The official recognition came on March 29th, 2003. Now the art gallery is open to the public with all proceeds going to the HPA scholarship fund. The foundation of the art gallery and the motivation to raise money for Hawaii Preparatory Academy scholarships I think is crucial and that is something that every single one of our docents and we always say when visitors come in from whatever country or place we do accentuate, we reinforce the fact that the sales herein contribute to the scholarship program at HPA. Being like a scholarship student myself, I'm so grateful and I, I don't know, I'm just really honored to have the opportunities that this gallery has provided for me and many others. This gallery has helped my learning by exposing me to new artworks and new artists and new forms of art. Um, as well as picking up something new every time I'm in class. The Isaacs Art Center continues to serve as an example of preserving the past while providing for the future. This is Brock Eminem from Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Hiki no. Stay tuned now for this sweet and colorful how-to by students at Ilima Intermediate School in the Eva District of Oahu. Halo halo in Filipino means mix mix. This dessert is a sweet treat that will help you cool off on a hot day. Halo halo is derived from a Japanese dessert called kakigori, which is shaved ice served with sweet beans. This popular dessert traveled to Hawaii in the early 1900s when Filipino laborers immigrated to work on the sugarcane fields of Oahu. There are different ways to make halo halo. The ingredients we will be using are ube ice cream, shaved ice, coconut jelly, condensed milk, and halo halo mix, which includes red beans, white beans, makapuno, and jackfruit pulp. Gather a jar or a bowl and a spoon to serve the dish. Scoop one spoonful of each into the jar. Then shave the ice and scoop it into the glass until it comes up to the rim. 
Next, pour in your condensed and evaporated milk until your ice is fully covered in it. Top it off with a scoop of ube ice cream and shredded coconut. Lastly, mix it all together and serve in individual cups or bowls. Finally, enjoy your tasty, cool halo halo with friends. This is Nasita Salas from Ilima Intermediate School for Hiki No. Aloha, we're here on the campus of Kalani High School in East Honolulu. A favorite food item at our school is fried rice, which is served at our calf. The calf cooks around 20 pounds of rice. They add lots of scrambled eggs and also lots of love. This year, it has become the most popular menu item. This next story by students from Kalani High School in Honolulu is about Simi Tupaola, an up-and-coming rapper. And you know we're going off with the hair, but you know I gotta go get the bread. Like, uh, every single day, man, I gotta get it. I ain't never get it. And I ain't always flipping it. My name is uh, Simi Tupaola, but I, like for my rapper name, I put my middle name, which is King. I'm in uh, 11th grade, and I go to Kalani High School. I first got into rapping when I was like in elementary school, but then and then I started like writing raps in middle school, but then I took it seriously like last year. I developed my passion for rapping just from keep like constantly listening to music all the time. We got the same struggles. We got the same struggles. The thing I like most about rapping is just like getting my music out there and like having like people hear it and they get like motivated and stuff. Yeah. I love performing in front of audiences and I like seeing the reactions of people. The hardest part about rapping is most probably uh, the creative process. I write my lyrics, like it's kind of weird, like in the morning, like three in the morning, but that's when like, I'm most like inspired, like motivated to do stuff. Football caught my heart. I was on my third year and a bum took my spot. Never falling short again. Then I got a gross but then it all began. And then I started rapping middle school. Knew this was for me. Knew about to come a trip more. Before I was born, my father was uh, sent to prison. And he came out when I was 10. But he went back in. And then he just finally came back out when I was 15. Mm -hmm. So it was like the struggle without having a father for all those years. It was like, it's not like the whole thing's about him. I might like drop like a like a lyric or two about him. Been working on my craft since the day I lost my dad, but enough of that, man. I'm on to the next one. Everybody's singing that I gotta be the best one. My mama's I hear most of my ideas like if I listen to the beat, I just think of something and it just comes off the spot. Or like I already have an idea in mind and I go looking for like beats to go with the thought. It first started off with like, like verses, but they're like all scattered all over the place. And I bought the beats for all of them. About like a whole recording, like home recording studio thing for me. And I did all of that, and I sent it to this guy in Eva to produce it. Fourth note, we just got it going. I made my first song, and that got like 23,000 plays right now. Well, my greatest accomplishment will be this uh, mixtape that I'm dropping. But it took like forever. It took like a year to make, and like hundreds of dollars. It's like 11 songs. Plan on moving out of Hawaii, because like no one can really hear you. Like if you're down here. Rapping has like really impacted my life in a good way. Like now more people know who I am, like my story, and they can relate to what I've been through. This is Maya Kiave Costa from we Kalani High School for Hiki No. We're here at the satellite site of Mili'i Pu'u Virtual Academy of Ku'o Kala Public Charter School on Hawaii Island. One of the favorite foods for the people of Mili'i is opihi. Opihi is a mollusk that is found along the shoreline. Many people use a butter knife to collect opihi off the rocks, called pounding opihi. While collecting opihi off the rocks, please be cautious. It is dangerous to turn your back to the ocean. You should go at low tide and in groups of two. Some eat opihi raw. They use a spoon to scoop it out of its shell, and then they pop it into their mouth. We love opihi! The following story by students at Kuo Kala Mili'i Pu Virtual Academy on Hawaii Island is about Kay House Springer, who is following her dream to help Hawaiian communities preserve their ocean resources. Kay House Springer is soft-spoken and thoughtful, but don't underestimate her. By following her dreams and doing what she loves, she has become a major force in conserving Hawaii's ocean resources. As a young girl, I went surfing, played in the ocean, fish um, off the shores of Waikiki and East, Ho East Oahu. And so I always wanted to have those connections to the ocean and be able to find a career that I will enjoy. I, I won't ever get tired and I won't ever 
um, feel like I'm working. So I went to Uichilo. I got a degree in Hawaiian studies, minored in marine science, and I went on to get my master's in tropical conservation biology. She turned her degrees into a career, teaching Hawaiian families how to use science to help them preserve the fish populations in their communities and their way of life. We build resource monitoring programs, like going out into the ocean and doing dives. I like to consider myself um, in the field of marine conservation and community-based marine resource management. So incorporating Native Hawaiian um, perspectives and Western science and technology to monitor the resources. Her biggest achievement has been helping to establish Conservation International Hawaii, a nonprofit organization seeking to restore ocean health, food security, and sustainable living. Its motto is Ho'i Ikekai Momona, which means return to an abundant ocean. Springer hopes to do this by creating unique plans for each community. Um, understanding the needs of Native Hawaiian communities that are looking at marine resource management and really taking into consideration the, the things that are needed. Springer is already making an impact in Mili. A teacher there has added to the curriculum kilo, which is the Hawaiian term for traditional observation of the environment. This is just one way how Springer may be influencing a whole new generation of conservationists. This is Austin Martin from Kua Okala, Middle Hipu'u Virtual Academy for Hikino. This next story from students at Mid-Pacific on Oahu shows how young people can tap into the power of an ancient tradition. Oh, yeah. Over the past 40 years, the Mid-Pacific Varsity Baseball team has had 14 state tournament appearances, 8 ILH championships, and 5 state titles. Assistant coach Scott Muramoto has been a part of the team for 18 years and almost every one of those victories. He constantly pushes his players to work hard. Do I feel like there's, they could always work harder? Yes. I feel like a lot of times they could work smarter. And if you're just working to work, you might get physically stronger, but you know, baseball is a real mental game. In his creative approach for mental preparation, he enlists the help of a culture artifact, the Daruma. The Daruma is a Japanese doll that helps the owner stay focused on a particular goal. The owner colors in one eye while thinking about a goal, and colors in the other eye when the goal is achieved. You know, the Dharma has a base where it supposedly, if you push it over, it'll rock back. You know, so it shows that resilience. To kind of simulate what happens in the season, yeah? Like, you're not gonna win every game, so sometimes you get knocked down, but you gotta come right back. Team captain, Zach Gushikin, understands how the Dharma can affect the team. Last season, we put the Dharma in the back of the dugout, and we start off the season one and two. It wasn't looking too good. So we moved the Dharma to the front. We won nine straight games after that. So I feel like Dharma is very important to us. The Dharma even travels with the team. It's part of a tradition, pretty much. Um, we play with this by our sides every day, every game. It pretty much is part of our family already. And family plays for one another. The Angry Owl Ritual is a goal-setting exercise that the entire team participates in before and after every game. It is a reminder that achieving smaller goals is what makes a larger goal possible. You always color in the right eye first, and then if you come out on top, you color in the left eye. With these small yet unique team-building exercises, the Owls continue to be a winning program year in and year out. This is Jason Kimura from the Pacific for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned working on the show. More proof that Hawaii students Hikino can do.
Stick around after the credits to find out what students from Kapa'a Middle School on Kauai learned from their hiki no experience. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.